We want to turn our focus and attention tonight now to Israel, where mandatory military conscription and service for the Jewish population is an integral part of society there. While most Jewish Israelis willfully report for duty, there is a small but vocal population who refuse to enlist in the Israel Defense Forces. And in tonight's prime focus, ABC's Matt Gutman reports from Israel, where one young man sacrificed his freedom to stand his ground. Tom Mitnick is riding toward an uncertain fate. He's on a bus to an Israeli military draft point. That was uh, the, the, the base asking me when I'm getting there. They're always pushing me to get there early and early and early and early. I would say, I can't, I can't, I can't. He faces another round of prison time with soldiers who've deserted or sold or used drugs or even allegedly abused prisoners. It's just a stressful situation. Anything to do, anything to do with the military is stressful. He's just 18, but Mitnick has already done five stints in Israeli military prisons, 185 days. Not for anything he has done, but for something he says he will never do. Enlist in the Israeli Defense Forces. Serving in the IDF is mandatory for all Jews in Israel, with a few exceptions. For many going to the army, that's the entry ticket to the Israeli society, and also an entry ticket to get a job, because you can get courses or some skills in the army. But when Mitnick received his draft orders, he burned them on the street with friends publicly. And in December, Mitnick became the country's first conscientious objector since Hamas's October 7th rampage. At a time when most Israelis rallied around their military. A person who has a different view and a different action and refuses to serve is seen by many of the public as a traitor. The IDF has denied his request for conscientious objector exemption twice. In a statement to ABC News, the IDF saying the IDF condemns refusals. The soldier Tom Mitnick presented his arguments at a professional committee, which examined and determined that there are no conscientious reasons for his claims. Every time Mitnick refuses to obey draft orders and report for duty, he risks facing 30 days or more in prison. And that day, we watched him walk into the draft center not knowing what his fate would be. Five, six, seven, eight, stop the killing, stop the Mitnick ended up going to military prison. But for the past 20 months, on almost every Saturday night in Tel Aviv, you'd be likely to find Mitnick amongst the throngs of Israelis clogging city center and clamoring for the ouster of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah. But on the fringe, going a step farther than the rest, chanting in Arabic, Hebrew, and English for an end to the occupation. One, two, three, four, occupation no more. And so, in an era of teenage social media influencers, Mitnick's string of five courts martial has earned him a different kind of fame here. Many Israelis would call it infamy. A man starts screaming at Mitnick's group from across the street. Wow. That guy was upset. I mean, people are really triggered when they see that. That guy was calling you guys traitors in the streets. Oh, yeah. We didn't. Yeah. That's the And with his crown of curls and gentle blue eyes, the kid who's been working on his juggling, has a girlfriend, and dutifully walks the family dog, does not come off as much of a firebrand. Should I make coffee? Mitnick is the son of Americans. Journalist Josh Mitnick and Leslie Benedict, who is a therapist. His father, Josh, who'd covered the Middle East for decades, died after a long battle with cancer in 2021. Tal has had a long fascination with politics, and you can see it in the books on his shelf and how he prizes a collection of political bumper stickers he inherited from his father. This is a generation of peace demands peace. I remember this very visceral moment of kind of scrolling on Instagram or maybe Twitter um, and seeing a B'Tselem post about a little girl from Gaza who was born and after a couple months uh, there was a sickness discovered. They asked for a permit to get to East Jerusalem to see a doctor and they had a, they had a, I mean, they had an appointment with this doctor um, and it got rejected and rejected and rejected. And then she just, uh, she passed away. It must be so hard to live with the fact 
um, to live with the question of what if I was born on the other side. And if you had been born on the other side and your dad had gotten sick, you would likely not have been able to get him all of those treatments to be able to go to the hospital back and forth all the time for years, right? Yes. During the past year, we have been embedded in Gaza with Israeli troops on five occasions in Gaza City. We're using the tank as cover right now. In Han Yunis. It says RPG. In there. southern Gaza. And everywhere you look, there is rubble. Many of the soldiers we spend time with seem tired, but none spoke publicly about their objection to the overall mission. But under the surface, says Noah Levy, Mitnick's lawyer, that's changing. During the, the war, there was a, a great um, uh, increase in the number of people who turned to us as a, a network that supports and gives advice uh, to conscientious objectors. Since Mitnick's conscientious objector claims have continuously been denied, he spent the first half of this year in and out of military prison. Home sweet home. For camp, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we were there this past June when his mother, Leslie, picked him up. And also the day before because I had money in the canteen and I didn't have anything to do with it. I bought a box of, uh, thing of cigarettes and handed it out to people. Oh, that's what you're giving people a cigarette? What? That's you what they want. They get like chocolate. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> The 18-year-old has spent his newfound adulthood in a cell for what he believes in. Do you understand that it might stem from the trauma of something unprecedented having happened in this country, that that's why they want to make an example of you and that's why maybe they fear you? Yeah, I mean, definitely I understand that this is um, also a part of my public campaign and also from um, the trauma of October 7th and the war. Um, but if democracy dies the second that there's a war going on, then did we really have democracy from the start? This question has earned Mitnick a steady stream of hate mail. We've seen military action is always a first choice. And also this has caused a deeply militarized society where the army is placed in the center um, of the society and it's seen as this golden goose where you're not allowed to touch it, you're not allowed to say anything about it. Though Mitnick's latest request for conscientious objector status was denied, he says he won't be sent back to prison this time. A small victory in his book. You know, we see the pictures of your father here, who was also a journalist. How do you think he would feel about this? I think he would be proud that I'm standing up for my opinion, and especially when it comes from values of the same values that he taught me of acceptance, of listening to the other side, um, and making this place better.